Hi, welcome to Voice of Hope Media. We come your way with Prophecy Unsealed. This is a 10 packed Bible based presentation from God's servant, Pastor Isaac Appel. And I'm happy to invite you to join us in tonight's presentation. It is good to have you. I welcome all of you, especially our friends listening to us on the Voice of Hope online radio. And those of you watching us live on Facebook, on air, and online. God bless you so much for joining us tonight. Last night, Pastor Apple took us through a wonderful presentation. And tonight, he comes your way with another wonderful presentation from God. I want to invite you to be ready for tonight's presentation. And please, don't forget to take part in our daily Bible quizzes. Because these quizzes have been carefully selected from the presentations given by Pastor Isaac Appel. And I know when you take part, God will bless you and you will have an in-depth knowledge in the Word of God. Last night, our presentation was entitled, The Apocalyptic Signs. And Pastor took us through the apocalyptic signs, those signs that will precede the coming of Jesus Christ. I know you understood the lesson. And so if you have any questions, you can send your questions to us on WhatsApp and on Facebook, and we will answer them for you. Before tonight's presentation, I want us to go through the questions that were set for yesterday's presentation. Number one, in Matthew 24, Jesus outlined some things of his coming. And what are those things called? And we call them the signs. And so those of you who took part in the quiz, the answer is signs for question number one. Number two, Jesus warned about the rise of false prophets. There were multiple choice answers. And so the correct answer is prophets. Because Jesus warned us of false prophets and false Christ. Number three, Satan can also perform miracles. True or false? The answer is true. Revelation 13 verse 13 says that, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. It is true that Satan can perform miracles. And so don't be, and so do not marvel when you see Satan's false prophet performing miracles to deceive God's children. Number four. Miracles performed by false prophets are the works of evil spirit, true or false? The answer is true. I know you got it right. Revelation 16 verse 14, as Pastor rightly said, the Bible says that for they are the spirits of devils working miracles. And so the devil can use evil spirits to work and perform miracles to deceive the people of God. Question number five. The things happening around us tell that the signs have been fulfilled. Is it true or false? The answer is true. Jesus is coming to destroy the wicked and take his people home. What's the answer for this question? The answer is true. Number seven. Prophets of our time can predict the day of Christ's coming. Is it true or false? The Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 36, that on the day of his appearing, no man knoweth. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And so this question is false because prophets of our time can never predict the day when Jesus will appear. Number eight, Jesus Christ is the only one who can give life. Is it true or false? We get the answer from John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through me. And so we see that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he gives life. Number nine. As part of the signs of Christ's coming, we see so many things. And so the question is, 
famines and pestilences are part of the signs of Christ's coming. Is it true or false? Based on pastor's presentation last night, we saw that it is true that as part of the signs that will precede the coming of Jesus Christ, there will be pestilences and famines. These will come, and we see that they have come, and so it is true. Final question. Timothy predicted that in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure. Is it true or false? In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says that men will be lovers of pleasure. And so this is true. Thank you so much for taking part in our daily Bible quizzes. And we know that these quizzes are helping you to learn God's words daily in a simple way. God bless you for taking part. And so, if you just joined us, you are welcome to Voice of Hope Media. We come your way with Prophecy Unsealed, a 10 packed Bible-based presentation from God's servant, Pastor Isaac Appel. Tonight is the second night. We want to invite Sylvia Ayi for one of her wonderful inspirational songs. Stay tuned and enjoy. was a beautiful rendition from Sylvia Ayi. God bless her so much. And I know you enjoyed the song so much. It is time for tonight's presentation. This is the second presentation from Pastor Isaac Appel. I know God will bless you through this presentation. And tonight, the message is entitled, The Prophecy of the Coming King. Stay tuned and enjoy. I know you are waiting for this king, and Pastor will announce to you the good news for tonight. God bless you, and stay tuned.
Hello, my dear friend. It is always a wonderful joy to be with you. Yes, indeed, let us give praise and thanks to God for His good and His mercies endure it forever. Let us give praise and thanks to God for His good and His mercies endure it forever. My dear friend, I want to welcome you to day number two of the Prophecy Unsealed Bible series. I believe that you were blessed with the first lesson. Now you know the time that we find ourselves in. So the next time somebody asks you, what time is it? Answer the person, we are living in the last days and Jesus Christ is coming. So you better get to know him. Before Christ comes to take us to be with him in his kingdom above, we must be with him. I mean, he must be already living inside our heart. Otherwise, we cannot be with him. Before we can be with Jesus Christ in his kingdom above, we must first have him in our heart. If Christ is not in your heart, you cannot be with him in his kingdom above. Today, we are going to look at something very, very important. In fact, today, through Bible prophecy, we are going to discover the last king that this world will see. And so our message for tonight has been entitled, The Prophecy of Earth's Last King. We are going to discover exactly how this king that will rule the whole world for the last time would come again. And this message is very important. So I urge you once again to get your Bible because I don't want you to take my words for it. You must not build your doctrine for salvation based on a human being's word. It must be built on the word of God alone and that is it. So get the Bible and then get your jota, get a, pe- a piece of paper and a pen so that you can write down every text and at your free time, you can cross check to find out if indeed the message that you heard is in the Bible. Remember, in the morning, we will share a quiz based on this particular message that you are listening so that you can have a broader knowledge of the word of God. But before we go into tonight's message, I want to invite you to join me right now as we approach the throne of God in prayer. Father Divine, the time has come once again. This is the second day of our 10 days um, series. We invite you once again to minister unto us. Speak through me because I am nothing without you. Let your spirit speak to all our listeners so that they would understand your truth. And just as you have promised us, the truth would set them free. Bless us and anoint us in a very special way. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Who is this earth's last king? You know, this world has witnessed several powerful kings who have ruled in different parts of the world. There were times where we had powerful kings who ruled the entire known world at their time. Kings like Nebuchadnezzar, they ruled the entire world. So from from the pharaohs of Egypt to the Caesars of Rome, to the powerful kings of Africa, the world has witnessed powerful kings, but they all come and they go. Some of them, when they come to power, their reign looks as if they will never leave power. But just as human beings are destined to die, a time will come where they will go. And indeed, they are all gone. But Bible prophecy makes us understand that a king is going to come and this king's kingdom and his government will never be taken over by another king. Today we want to find out exactly who this king is and how he is going to come. My dear friend, I am not referring to an Egyptian pharaoh. I am not referring to the return of any of the Caesars. I am not referring to any of the powerful kings that has ruled this world. But I am referring to a king who once came into this world, but many people did not recognize him. Before he left this world, he made a prophecy. His prophecy was simple. And this king, my dear friend, is the king of kings, the lord of lords, the son of the Most High God. I am talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. In John chapter 14, reading from verses 2 to verse 3, Jesus Christ 
before he left this world, prophesied that he will come again. Now listen to what he said. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus Christ said, he was going to prepare a place. That was a promise that he made to the disciples. And to us, this is one of the most amazing Bible prophecies. The same Jesus Christ who was born in a manger 2,000 years ago. The same Jesus Christ who was crucified on the cross of Calvary. The same Jesus Christ who fed 5,000. The same Jesus Christ who healed, who resurrected the dead. That same Jesus Christ, my dear friend, says he's coming back again. But this time round, Jesus is not coming as a lamb to be slaughtered. Jesus is coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah. In Revelation chapter 14 verse 14, the apostle John said, Then I looked, and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. You see, a white horse is a symbol of purity. It is also a symbol of victory and triumph. Jesus Christ is not going to come for, for the Pharisees to rise up against him and kill him again. No. Jesus Christ is not going to come so that he'll be mocked and then he'll be killed again. No, Jesus is coming on a white horse, meaning Jesus is coming victorious. He's coming as the king of kings. He is coming as the Lord of lords. He is coming to establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed. He is coming to be earth's last king, the king that will rule forever and ever. Jesus my dear friend, is coming again. But there is an important question that we need to find answers to in the Bible. Because when it comes to how Jesus will come the second time, there are many theories out there. Some of them are very popular. Some are not even known. But we want to find out from the Bible, how would Jesus Christ come the second time? How can I know that I will be ready when he comes. You see, if you miss the manner in which Christ will come, you might miss Jesus Christ the second time. When Jesus came the first time, the Pharisees missed him because they were expecting the Messiah to come in a different manner. They were not expecting the Messiah to be born in a manger. They were not expecting the Messiah to be a carpenter's son. They missed him. They missed him because they were expecting somebody to deliver them physically from the hands of the Romans from which they were, they were captives. They were expecting a warrior. They, they, they were never expecting a different form of warrior, a spiritual warrior like Jesus Christ. So they missed him and they killed him. They killed their own deliverer. Because they missed the manner in which he was going to come the first time. That is why it is extremely important for any Christian living in these last days to know exactly how Jesus will come the second time. Some believe that when Jesus is coming the second time, that the saint would be taken away or snatched away or popularly known as the saint will be raptured into heaven. Those who are left behind, according to this popular theory, would be left to wonder what has happened to those who are taken away. Those who are left behind will have to endure the reign of the Antichrist for seven good years. Now, according to this theory, those who are able to endure the reign of the Antichrist without receiving the mark of the beast would have the opportunity to go to heaven when Jesus comes the third time with those who were raptured away. Now, this is a very popular theory believed by so many Christians. 
My dear friends, I, I want to encourage you that for anything that you grew up believing, don't just accept it because when we're going to church, we're young, this is what we believed and all that. Now that you are a matured Christian, begin to question everything that you grew up hearing. Never be afraid because God said we must test all spirit and prove that which is right. So is this how Christ would come? Would some people be snatched away secretly? And then those who are left behind would have to work out their salvation and have another opportunity to be with Christ. Is that what the Bible says? My dear friend, I want to share with you five simple truths, simple truths from the Word of God, the Word of God in your hand. Five simple truths about how Christ would come the second time. And I pray that after this particular message, you would have all the understanding you need to know on the manner of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 verse 4, Be careful that you are not deceived. Truth number one, the second coming of Jesus Christ would be a literal event. When we talk about literal event, we mean that it is going to be a rare event. When we talk about the second coming of Christ, it is not a metaphor. It is not something that represents another event. It is rare. The same Jesus Christ who was born in, the, in, in a manger, that same Jesus is coming for real. The same Jesus Christ who was physically crucified, that same Jesus is coming back for real. Some people say, that when we say the second coming of Christ, all that it means is that when you accept Jesus as your Savior, Christ comes in your heart. And that is it. That is not the case. Jesus Christ comes into the heart of every human being who accepts him as his Lord and Savior. But Jesus would come again physically the second time to take us to be with him in his kingdom above. That is the prophecy that he gave us. In John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. Now, when you go to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1, the Bible makes us understand that on the day that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, he was with the disciples. Then all of a sudden, he was taken into the clouds. And as he was ascending into heaven, the disciples were gazing at Jesus Christ going to heaven. As they were gazing at him, two angels appeared behind them. Then the angels asked them, Men of Galilee, why, why, what are you doing here? Why are you gazing into the heavens? Then in verse 11 of Acts chapter 1, the angel said, This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, would so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. He said, This same Jesus that you are seeing going to heaven, this same Jesus will come the same way that you see him go. My dear friend, a real Jesus Christ ascended to heaven and a real Jesus Christ will descend into this world very soon. It is going to be a literal event. That is truth number one. Truth number two, the second coming of Jesus Christ would be a visible event. Every human being alive when Christ comes will see him. It is not going to be something that you hear about. You will see with your own eyes. In fact, the Bible in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 makes it very clear. It says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye would see him. He did not say that some eyes would see him. He says every eye would see him. Some teach that because it was only the disciples who saw Jesus going to heaven. So only the disciples will see Jesus coming again. That is not consistent with the teachings of the Bible. Because the Bible in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 did not say that when he is coming again, those who saw him will see him come. It says when Christ is coming, every eye would see him. He did not say the eyes of the disciples. He said every eye would see him. So when Jesus is coming, my dear friend, it is going to be a literal event. And it is going to be something that everyone will see. 
It is not going to be a secret rapture. The rapture has a different meaning altogether in the Bible. And I would explain that in this lesson. Christ's coming will be so clear that everyone alive will see Christ coming. It will not be a situation as we watch in movies like Left Behind by Nicolas Cage and all those African movies where the rapture takes place and then people are taken away with their clothes left there on the, on, 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 in the chairs or wherever they were. That is not how it's going to be. The Bible says every eye will see Jesus coming. Truth number three, the second coming of Jesus Christ would be an audible event. Apart from the fact that every eye will see him come, the events or the things that will take place during the second coming of Christ will be so loud that every human being will hear that Jesus is coming. Listen, when Christ comes, you don't need to be told. You will hear it for yourself. Where is that found in the Bible, Pastor? Well, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, and with a trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ would rise first. It says, when Jesus is coming, when, when Christ is descending from heaven, he will descend with a shout. What would that shout be for? Christ says that he would descend with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. My dear friend, I don't know how loud that is going to be. But so far as the Bible has said, Christ will descend with a shout. It means the shout will be loud enough for everyone living to hear. Even the dead will hear the shout and, and will come out from their grave. That is what the Bible says. It says, with a shout of an archangel and with a trumpet of God. When you watch these movies about left behind, about rapture, we don't hear the trumpet of God. We don't hear the angels shouting. But meanwhile, the same verse that talks about rapture also says that when Christ is coming, there will be the shout of an archangel and the trumpet of God will sound. It continues to say, and the dead in Christ would rise first. Whenever Jesus appears, there isn't going to be the secret taking away or snatching away of people into heaven. There would be what is known as the shout of the angel and the trumpet of God. We all know the Bible says that, that the second coming of Christ will be preceded with trumpet. We don't know how the trumpet, the, the melody, how it's going to be, but we know that there's going to be the sound of a trumpet. And once we hear the sound of the trumpet, Jesus will be in the sky waiting for us. It says, the moment the trumpet sound, the dead in Christ, what it means is that all those who have died believing in Jesus are those who are going to be first resurrected. They are those who first of all move into heaven before the living saints. In verse 17 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. The second coming of Christ, my dear friend, it is going to be so loud that every ear will hear. Can you imagine the King of Kings, the creator of the heavens and the universe, coming to take his redeemed home quietly? No, it wouldn't happen like that. The Bible makes it so clear that it will be so noisy that everyone will hear. When the nation's president is going for an occasion or a program, he always moves with a motorcade. There will be sirens ahead of him. A president doesn't go anywhere quietly. There is always a siren announcing the arrival or the presence of the president of the nation. The king of kings. The king of kings, the creator of the universe, will never come to take us home quietly like that. The Bible makes it very clear. It says, when the dead in Christ are being resurrected, then those who remain, those who live, those who are alive and remain, it says they will be caught up. My dear friends, the word rapture is taken from the phrase caught up. You realize that 
when the 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 catching up or the cutting up is taking place, it would be done when the dead in Christ are being resurrected. That is the truth. Truth number four, the second coming of Jesus Christ would be a glorious event. It will be a wonderful event. It will be what would crown the history of this world. Christ will come to take his redeemed home. The same Christ who lived in this world as as a poor carpenter's son is coming as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 27, the Bible says, For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. The red Jesus Christ, my dear friend, is coming in the sky. The red Jesus Christ is coming to resurrect the dead. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 30, the Bible says the Son of Man would would appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth would mourn because of him. When he comes, everyone will see him. When he comes, everyone will hear about it. It is going to be a glorious event. It is not going to be a secret thing. Let me continue. Truth number five. The second coming of Jesus Christ would be a climatic event. It would end everything. The coming of Christ would decide the destinies of men. It will be when the destinies of men will be decided and you will know where you will spend eternity. Whether in the kingdom of God. Whether in the kingdom of God. Or in eternal damnation. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 53. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. Paul says, there will be the last trumpet. You see, the movies that we watch, they are just fictions. They are not biblical. Unfortunately, some believe that that is how it's going to be. So much that some believe that Satan will be the one punishing people in hell. Be careful what you accept as truth. Always accept what the Bible says, not what you grew up believing. Because when we're growing up, there are several things that we heard being preached. But when we grew up and researched from our, for, for ourselves in the Bible, we got to know that it was not so. Don't be a Christian who takes everything that he's given. Be a Christian who takes it, rev- I mean, research it, and be guided by the Spirit of God to know the truth in the Bible. Paul says, when the trumpet sounds, we will be changed in the twinkle of an eye. The living saint will receive immortality because this corruptible body must put on incorruption and this mortal body cannot be taken to heaven. It must be put on or it must put on immortality. This would only happen when Christ is coming again, not through a secret rapture, but will come for every eye to see him. In Revelation chapter 15 verse 3, the Bible says, Great and marvelous are your works, Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways, King of the saints. When Jesus Christ comes, there will be two classes of people. The first class are those who accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They will say in Isaiah chapter 25 verse 9, Behold, this is our God, we have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord, we have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, according to Revelation chapter 6, the second group would pray and cry, for rocks and mountains to fall on them. Why? Because they cannot look at the face of he who is coming in the cloud. My dear friend, Jesus is coming again. He is coming and every eye will see him. He is coming and when he comes, there wouldn't be another opportunity. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, the Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You see, let me tell you something. Our eternal destinies is being settled by the choices that we make today. If you decide for Christ to be your Savior today, your destiny would be in the kingdom of God. But if you don't, my dear friends, I am sorry to say, but you may end up with where God has prepared for the devil and his demons. So when Jesus Christ comes, there would be the seismic upheavals, there will be the earthquakes, there will be shakings and things that will cause everyone to see and hear. When Christ comes and the trumpet sound and the earthquakes and all those things are taking place, The Bible says that dead in Christ will be raised first. Then we who are alive and remain will be changed. Immortality will be placed on us and our corruptible bodies will receive incorruption. At that same time, the wicked will be destroyed by the brightness of the coming of Christ. Then the righteous will be welcomed into the kingdom of God and we shall be with God in heaven just as he prophesied in John chapter 14, verses 1 to verse 3. But the question is, what about the rapture? So does that mean the rapture is not biblical at all, it's not in the Bible? But the question is, what about the rapture? Is it really in the Bible that there will be a rapture, a secret rapture? Doesn't Jesus Christ talk about it in Matthew 24, verse 36? That when he comes, it will be like a thief in the night. Well, my dear friend, in Matthew 24, verse 36, I want you to listen to exactly what Christ was trying to let us understand. He says that, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. In verse 43 of Matthew 24, Jesus Christ said, but know this. That if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. You see, Jesus Christ was trying to let us understand a simple principle. The same principle that was happening in the days of Lot, the days of Noah, and all the times that God had brought judgment in this world. Christ was talking about the time that he was going to come not the manner of his coming. Let me explain. You see, when a thief is going to attack you, he does not announce when he's going to come. If you know exactly that today, this evening, robbers or armed robbers are going to attack you and rob you of your possession, you are not going to sleep. And you are not going to sleep alone either. You will definitely call for security or the police to guard your house. But because we are always not aware when robbers would attack us, they always take our possessions. Jesus Christ is saying, his coming will be like a thief in the night. Because he will come at a time when so many are not prepared. They are not prepared because they were not watching. They were not watching because they, were, they, they had taken in into the pleasures of the world. But to those who have Christ... They will not be unprepared because they will be watching and praying just as Christ commanded them to do. My dear friend, the coming of Christ will be like a thief to those who are not prepared. When Jesus comes as a thief, the world will not expect him. So in Matthew 24, 44, Jesus Christ says, Therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. The Apostle Peter explains what exactly will happen when Christ comes like a thief in the night. You see, a lot of people quote 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to defend the rapture, the secret rapture. But when they quote this text, they only mention the first portion of the text and, and, and do not do justice to the entire text. Listen to what Peter said. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. If you end here, 
you would end up defending or believing that Christ's coming will be a secret rapture thing. But he continues to say, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the element will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burnt up. You see, First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 said that when Christ is coming, there will be the shout of an archangel and the trumpet of God will sound. In the same way, Peter is saying, Jesus' coming will be like a thief in the night. It will be a surprise to those who are not prepared. But that day, it says the heavens will pass away with a great noise. That is why I made you to understand that Christ's coming would be an audible event. So when he comes as a thief in the night, there will be a great noise. Before you know it, Christ is here. And those who are not ready, it will be a surprise to them. That is the truth, my dear friend. The second coming of Jesus Christ is going to be a surprise event to those who are not prepared. But to those who are prepared, they will be expecting the coming of their Messiah. But what about the expression in the Bible that says that one will be taken and the other will be left? Well, when you read I mean, Luke chapter 17, verse 36, the Bible says, Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. You see, when you try to understand this verse as it is in the Bible or literally like that, what you are saying is that automatically when Jesus Christ comes, there will be two people in the field. That will not make sense. Christ was trying to let us understand what has already happened in the past. That is why in the same Luke chapter 17, before verse 36, where he said two men will be in the field, in verse 26 he said, as it was in the days of Noah. And in verse 28 of Luke 17, he also said, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. So Christ compared his second coming to both what happened to the days of Noah and those that happened in the days of Lot. The question is, what happened in the days of Noah? In the days of Noah, there were two classes of people. The first class were those who were left. Those who were left are those who were in the ark. They believed the message of Noah and so they were left in the ark. The second class were those who were taken away by the flood waters. Now, in the days of Lot, there were those who accepted the call of God and they were taken away. They, 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 that is the family of Lot. They were left. They were not destroyed by the fire. So, in the days of Lot, Lot and his family were left, but the rest were taken away by the fire. In the same way, when Jesus Christ comes, there will be two groups of people. Those who will be left are those who have Jesus as their Savior, and the other group will be taken away to hellfire. That is what Christ is saying. There will be two classes of people. One class will be saved, and then one class would be lost. There would not be another opportunity there wouldn't be a third coming. There is no second opportunity. The time to get serious about your salvation is now. When Christ comes, those who did not accept Christ when they were living, according to Revelation chapter 6, verses 15 to 17, the Bible says, And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the, the mighty men, every slave and every free man, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne, and from the wrath of the, of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Those who will be able to stand the second coming of Christ are those who today have stood for Christ. If you are standing for Christ in this world, despite all the persecution, on the day of Christ, when the wrath of God falls upon this world, you will be able to stand. But if you don't stand for Christ today, you can't stand on the day of the wrath of God. My dear friend, the simple truth 
of the coming of Christ is that his coming will be a literal event. It will be visible. All eyes will see. It will be audible. There will be the shout of an archangel and the trumpet of God. It will be a glorious event. It will be a climatic event. Are you ready for the coming of Christ? The truth is so clear. The Bible makes it very clear in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17, that the rapture would actually take place. And by the way, just as I explained, in 1 Corinthians, I mean 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 17, the Bible said that when Christ comes, as the trumpet sound, and as the dead in Christ are being resurrected, in verse 17 of 1 Thessalonians, it says, Then we who are alive and remain would be caught up. The phrase there, caught up, that is where the word rapture is taken from. And so rapture only takes place when Christ has come in the sky and then the saints who are left behind are being changed and incorruptible. I mean, the corruptible is being put on or transformed into incorruptible. That is when we will be taken to heaven. And that taking up or being caught up into heaven, that is the rapture. It doesn't take place secretly. It doesn't take place before and for some sin to be left in this world for seven years. You see, when you accept that, it means that, listen, now those who have been saved are saved by grace and grace alone. If you believe that rapture will take place and after seven years, those who are left behind would have to work hard and endure without receiving the mark of the beast and after that they will be saved then it means a time will come where some people will have to work out their salvation by works it is not in the bible it is not in the bible when i was young i thought this was what the bible taught and as as the world had taken over my heart i said to myself i am going to enjoy myself in this world I am going to have fun, follow the world, drink, smoke, change women. After all, when Christ comes, there will be another opportunity. I said to myself, I will go and stay somewhere in the forest, get some animals and rear for myself, and avoid taking the mark of the beast. After all, it's just going to be seven years. That is what I said to myself. I didn't know that I was deceiving my own self. Because when Jesus comes the second time, that is will be the end. There would not be another opportunity. The time to get serious is now. Now is the time to accept Jesus as your personal savior. The prophecy has been fulfilled. Soon, Christ would come. Earth's final king is coming. He's coming with a cloud. He's coming with all the angels in heaven. He's coming, my dear friends. Jesus is coming to establish the everlasting kingdom. Do you have him in your heart today? Do you want to have him in your heart? He is ever ready. He says, even if your sins are scarlet, come, let's reason together. I am going to wash it and I will make it white as snow. Tonight, do you desire to have Christ as your personal savior? Do you want to be with him in his kingdom, the new kingdom that will not be destroyed? If that is your prayer, I want to humbly invite you. This is what I want you to do for me. If you desire to have Jesus as your Savior, our numbers are on the screen right now. Get in touch with us right now on WhatsApp. You can give us a call on WhatsApp or you can just WhatsApp us on, on, on the numbers on the screen. And let's discuss how you can begin a walk with Jesus Christ. Because very soon it will be too late. And you see, your life can go just like that. At the beginning of this year, look at what happened to Kobe Bryant. He had plans by his God. Anything can happen, but today, you must seal your salvation so that whatever happens, you know that when the trumpet sounds, you will belong with the saints in heaven. I want to invite you, if that is your prayer, if that is your desire, join me right now as we pray to God. Father Divine, we thank you so much. Today, through your words, you have exposed the truth to us. Now we know exactly how Jesus Christ will come the second time. Please, Lord, 
We have been living our lives according to the dictates of this world. Now we know what you want from us. And we give all ourselves to you. Forgive us, O Lord. Look at what your servant, the enemy, has taken us through. Today, enough is enough. We surrender to you. We want you to establish your everlasting kingdom first in our heart, so that when the kingdom of glory is established, we will be among the citizens who will be with you forever in that kingdom. We thank you so much for forgiving us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. God bless you, my dear friends. God willing, tomorrow we shall continue. But be sure that tomorrow morning when the quiz is posted, you will take part and also share with your friends so that others would also be blessed with the word of truth. Have a wonderful evening. Shalom. It's been so refreshing listening to God's servant, Pastor Isaac Capel, as he gave us the wonderful message from God. I know that Jesus is coming again. I know that you are preparing to meet him. And so if you have any questions on tonight's presentation, you can send them to us on our social media handles. You can send them via WhatsApp or on Facebook. And we will gladly answer them for you. God bless you for staying tuned. And we will join you tomorrow with another wonderful presentation. God bless you.